Welcome to the Primitive Lifeways channel. In today's video, we're gonna work on an Osage orange stave in hopes of turning it into a bow. So stick around, we got a great show coming up. All right, so when I chase a ring on the back of a bow stave, I like to use a few different tools. Now, depending on the stave, I'll add to this kit. So sometimes with a wider stave, I'll use a draw knife. But for this stave, I just use my little Mora knife. Nice and thin, it works well. I have a pencil. I have a paring knife that's grounded down into a 90 degree angle. That'll help with getting around some of these knots. And then a very handy tool that I use often in the bow making process is a scraper that was made for me. Uh, this has, again, a 90 degree angle around the entire tool. It's a high carbon steel and it works well. So what I wanna do is, of course, chase a single growth ring down the entire length of the bow. That's gonna establish the back of the stave. And it's important to be able to recognize early wood and late wood in the bow making process. So the early wood, tends to have more of a pale color. So you can see all of this is early wood. And when you start cutting through that, you'll feel and you'll hear like a crunching sound. And that means you're cutting through that early wood. And then the late wood is what, again, I'm after. And that's going to be the back of the bow. So all of this that's already been chased, this is all late wood. On the top, this is all late wood but there's a few spots that have been violated on this stave. I can see quite a few. So it's important for me to chase a brand new growth ring and follow that faithfully. So where I left off, off camera is right in here. That's where that ring ends. And I just do this very carefully. And I just hit that early wood. Again, you can feel it and you can hear it. Well, I moved away from the garage and I gave it a few hours for the sun to start settling. And we have the perfect light condition. This is where you can really start to see these growth rings pop out. It was just getting really difficult to see them in the garage with the lighting that I had. Uh, these growth rings, again, they're just very, very shallow. And it can be tricky when you start working with these shallow growth rings. I'll give you a, a view of the growth rings. You can see how small they are. Just really small, thin growth rings. So this is where we left off, right here. Kind of dips down. That's all early wood, and then here's all of our late wood. And I want to start breaking through it once again. I don't know if you folks can hear that, but hear that crunch? That means you're into the early wood. It has a very distinct sound. All right, I'm getting ready to go into it, so see if you guys can hear that. Right there. Let's 
sounds real crunchy. Again, I'm just working real slow. I don't want to start cutting through the ring that I'm chasing. <laughs> That'll mean I'll have to go back again and do this process all over. That's a nice thing about a scraper. You can really work slow. Paying close attention to detail and those spots quickly disappear. And here's where we left off. And one more time before I start working off camera here, I want to give you a close up of these growth rings. So here is our late wood. And then here's our early wood. Right in through here. And that's all the stuff I'm getting rid of. And of course, here's the ring that we're chasing. Well, it's starting to get evening time, so I gotta wrap things up here. But you can see, might be a little bit difficult on camera, but we faithfully followed a single growth ring from tip to tip. And here's those three little pin knots, one right here one down here and then one on the far end of the stave. We paid close attention to that again with growth rings this thin. I like to work nice and slow. I don't want to violate anything. So the slower you work, the better in this case. But yeah, it's looking really nice. I also removed some of that belly wood with a sharp draw knife. <clears throat> And this is, believe it or not, it's already starting to bend, even though it's still this thick. That's a good thing. Osage is a nice springy wood, as I mentioned before. But, uh, you know, with this stave, once I turn it into a bow, I, I don't really expect much of it. I'm looking to get 35, 40 pounds at the most. What I'll end up doing is inducing a lot of reflex in each tip. Once I have the design laid out, you can see I already started etching some of the design out. I need to square these edges. So at this line, that's where I'm gonna square off. And it's gonna be a pretty narrow bow. <clears throat> 